Well, here I am once again to teach you about affliction. This is the third vlog in a series about afflictions. And in the first one, you and I together learned how God draws us back to himself through affliction. In part two, we learned that afflictions teach us God's laws. Well, today, we're going to learn together how God proves his faithfulness to us through affliction. And we are returning to Psalm 119, and this time we're in verse 75. Uh, we've looked at verse 67, and then verse 71, and now we're in verse 75. And I'm going to read this to you from the New King James Version. And it says, I know, O Lord, that your judgments are right, and that in faithfulness you have afflicted me. Dr. David Jeremiah says, when God afflicts us, it is always in faithful to us, faithfulness to us. He hurts us to help us. This does not sound logical, does it? We don't think that God ever intentionally hurts us. It reminds me of the parental phrase, this hurts me more than it hurts you. Now the child being punished, they argue that every time. They can't believe that it's hurting their mother or their father more than it's hurting them. And we argue too, don't we? We want to argue that God would never hurt us to help us because it flies in the face of current American Christian theology. But his word tells us that he does. And the psalmist, and again, it's believed that this was David, the psalmist knew without a doubt because he said, I know, O oh Lord, I know that his sins deserved fatherly correction, chastisement, the judgment of affliction. His word says, in faithfulness you have afflicted me. So I want to look at another example from scripture. In the first vlog, we looked at a New Testament example of Jesus and his disciples. In the second vlog, we looked at an example from David's life himself that he was referencing in that uh, verse 71, we believe. That's, a, that's what he referenced, was his own life. So now I want to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, and we're going to look at Paul and his life. See what he says. Let me find it here. Okay. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. This is verses 7 through 10, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation. And Paul says, So to keep me from becoming proud, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me and keep me from becoming proud. Three different times I begged the Lord to take it away. Each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults, hardships, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. In the previous six verses, Paul wrote about the time that he saw visions and revelations from the Lord. And in that, he clearly states that God allowed him to be afflicted to prevent him from becoming proud. This is a good thing. Again, I know that doesn't make sense. But pride is a strong and a demonic force that brings much destruction. And it says so in Proverbs 16, 18, which says, and I'm going to also read 19, Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Better to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. God was faithful to protect Paul by allowing a physical ailment to keep him humble. And that is a characteristic of Jesus. 
It tells us in the New Testament that Jesus was lowly. He was humble. God was making Paul more like himself. Remember, Jesus was God incarnate. He was God in the flesh. So if Paul was being made to be humble like Jesus, he was making him to be more like himself. That's what God was doing. Now, if he had allowed the affliction of depression in my life, I would have continued to live a very unbalanced, unhealthy lifestyle. But depression brought everything in my life to a screeching halt. And in that stillness, God taught me balance, which I have worked very hard to maintain ever since. And I intend to all my days to remain in a healthy, balanced lifestyle and serve Him out of that. So take time now. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Go back and read these verses, Psalm 119, 67, that teaches us that God uses affliction to draw us back to Him. Study verse 71 that teaches us that affliction teaches us God's law. And then this verse 75 that affliction proves God's faithfulness to us. And allow the Holy Spirit to speak and to reveal. Look back at times that you suffered or you were afflicted. And look for Him in it. Look for His faithfulness in it. And when you see it, thank Him. Honestly, when I was depressed and another person was telling me about their previous depression and how they were grateful for it, that made no sense to me. I couldn't fathom that. But I have come to the point. I am very grateful for it, very thankful because of so many blessings and so much increased health and peace and joy in my life because of what God has taught me through my depression. So if you have future affliction, can you look for God in it while you're in it? Oh, that's tough. I mean, we're our, our flesh, we're crying out, aren't we? Our soul and our spirit, when we're afflicted, all we want is relief. We want it to end. But can you look for God in it? That's a challenge for me too. I encourage us all to keep this in mind, that God is there. And if we can do that, it's going to be so much easier to endure it when we see that God is in the midst with us. I am Candy Rice, and this ministry is called Living Hope, and I teach the physical, mental, and spiritual healing truths from God's Word. This book, this is our hope. It is true. It is full of God's promises. It's good of, uh, full of His faithfulness, even in affliction. Please let me pray for you now. Father, you are a good, good Father. You are our Abba, our Daddy. And there is nothing that you do, there is nothing that you allow in our life that is not for our good. I thank you so much, Lord, for the times you've allowed me to recognize that and see that because it helps me then in the next trial, the next affliction, the next suffering. You are with us. Your name, Emmanuel, means God with us. And I thank you for loving us that much that you never leave us, you never forsake us. We are never alone. Father, I pray that by your spirit, by your grace, that you would just bring enlightenment to anyone watching this vlog, anyone in your word, open their spiritual eyes and ears to you, Lord, to your truth about affliction. And I thank you. I praise you. I glorify you. May your name be lifted high and exalted always. And I ask and say it all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.